Hello and welcome to Taiwan Today. I am Natalie So. Today I'm delighted to have with me Julie Shin. She's a doctor, a singer, the uh, founder of Yuanwu Gallery, and also the CEO of World TV. Julie, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me today, And um, I really admire your life. You have so many different <laughs> passions and uh, talents and quite a story. You came here, I mean, you, you had your own family practice as a family doctor in Seattle, right? With yeah. your husband, who was a lawyer um, at Microsoft. And for some reason, you decided to close that up and come here and start a gallery. Uh, tell, right. tell us about <laughs> what made you to make the, such a big decision like that. Yeah, well, I had a practice in Seattle area, and I was a family doctor for six to seven years. And my husband was a lawyer at Microsoft in the Xbox group. Um, you know, we had two small kids at the time, and uh, we had a big house, you know, two big cars, two little dogs. I, I <laughs> felt like I achieved the American, achieved dream, the American right? dream. Right. And, and at the time, I was thinking, you know, is this it? You know, is my life like this for the rest of the time? And I felt this strong urge to, you know, maybe feel like I, there's something else out there that really? I need to experience. Was and it just too um, routine for you, or what was it you felt like you were missing? I don't know. I think sometimes... Too perfect? <laughs> <laughs> too comfortable. Too I comfortable. felt like maybe I want to have new experiences, have mm. some new challenges, you know. And um, at the time, my parents were living in Taiwan. They moved back to Taiwan about 20 years ago. And, um, and I thought, you know, here I am in Seattle taking care of other people's parents, you know, seeing patients for the last six, seven years. And, you know, my parents are all the way in Taiwan. And every time I talk to them on the phone, they, they seem so busy. And, you know, if I moved back to Taiwan, I could see them more. You know, my kids could learn Chinese and, um, you know, just have some new, a new family adventure. So, um, thankfully, my husband was up for this Big change. That's even a bigger move for him because he's American, right? He's, he's not uh, Taiwanese. Right, right, right. I mean, he's a Jewish guy from Brooklyn. So <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it took me about a year to convince him to move to Taiwan. Um, and so we came to Taiwan. We were looking at schools for the kids, you know, place to live. And, um, you know, after about a year, the timing seemed right. So, and we made the big change. It was um, October of 2014. Yeah. It's been so, four years then. Yeah, so we've been in Taiwan for four years. And, you know, we, we love living in Taiwan. You know, it's, I feel like it's like a big family. <laughs> you know, Taiwanese people are so friendly. You know, they and, are and very friendly. You know, everyone's so friendly. And, you know, it's, it's a different feeling than living in the U.S., you know. Um, I, I feel like, you know, for me, the, the distance between people um, in the U.S. Is, is greater, especially in Seattle, because, you know, it rains a lot <laughs> in Seattle. And um, uh, as a family doctor, I was often asked to check my patients' vitamin, vitamin D levels. And, you know, even without checking it, I can tell them pretty much it's going to be low. Um, so, you know, it rains like six months out of the year in Seattle. We're higher up in latitude. So even in the summer when it's very beautiful time, uh, you know, the sun is not strong enough. So people start to get uh, seasonal affective disorder. And I think after living there for 10 years... You get more depressed too. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your mood is, gets affected by the yeah, weather, your, right? Your mood is very much affected by your surrounding, you know. So after living there for 10 years, you know, I felt like, you know, we needed a, a big change. And um, at the time, you know, just because my parents were in Taiwan and thought, you know, it'd be good for my kids to learn where I'm from. I was, I was born in Taiwan and um, moved to the U.S. when I was very young, when I was six so, years so old. So no regrets here at all coming back? You've been here for four years and yeah. you said goodbye to your practice. Now you're, yeah. I know that you like to use art as a way of... Um, Healing people, right? You talk about that a lot. Right. You used to use medicine as a way to heal people, but now you use your uh, painting or yes. even music. Yes. You know, before as a family doctor, um, you would write prescriptions, you know, for a patient. They would go and get medication. And now, you know, being back in Taiwan, and I discovered, you know, the power of art. You know, art is, you know, something that is an expression of all of our humanity. You know, no matter which country you're from, you know, art is something that can connect people all over the world. And, um, 
you know, and so now I say to people, I used to be a healer of the body, but now through art and also my uh, background in, my, in music, you know, I feel like I'm a healer of the spirit and the uh, soul and the heart, you know, so Xin Ling wow, Zi Liao. the whole person. Yes, yes, like the whole <laughs> Holistic person, healing. Yeah, psychologically and also uh, spiritually, you know, I think art is, you know, very powerful. You know, even when you see like an image on your cell phone, you know, people are always looking at their cell phone nowadays and, you know, sometimes even a very powerful image, you know, can grab your attention and you can feel emotions from just seconds of looking at a visual image. So, and you know, it's a universal language, you know, and so I tell people, you know, when you start to appreciate art, you know, you can see the world in a different light. And, you know. Well, how, would you, how would you describe the way you see the world once you uh, get into art? Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you look at an artwork, um, you know, I found that art is something that is a very social um, interaction. You know, when you go to an art gallery, where you go, if you go to an exhibition, you know, you can look at a piece and you can talk to your friend about, you know, what do you see? You know, if it's an abstract painting or even a, a realistic painting, you know, it can touch you in a way. Uh, when we look at art, it actually stimulates our motor cortex. Ah, so we're not there is a biological reason. There. Yes. Yes, so we're not just looking at the art with our eyes. You know, when we look at art, it stimulates our motor cortex. So our whole body is responding mm. to it. So that's why we can get touched, right? right? I mean, emotionally by a painting or something. Right, right. And then when you start to, you know, notice art more, and I think you start to notice in your daily surroundings. You know, people always like snapping photos with their cell phones nowadays. And, you know, I think that is also, in a way, an art form. You know, photography is an art, fashion is an art, you know, and, you know, design, architecture, th those are all arts that's all around us. So in our daily lives, you know, we encounter art, you know, many, many times <laughs> in a day. And, and so, you know, when you start to appreciate art more, and um, I, I think, you know, it can also give you an escape from the routine. You know, mm, so that's true. perhaps if I had appreciated art more in Seattle, I would still be there. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to escape all the way to Taiwan, and, and you yeah. opened your own gallery. The right. <laughs> it's called the Yuan Ru in yeah. English, Wan Ru in, in Chinese. Right, right? Wan Ru Gallery. So um, it's uh, actually my Chinese name. <laughs> so oh, okay. <laughs> my Chinese sense. name is Xie Wan Ru, and I thought, okay, uh, so my gallery is called Wan Ru Gallery. So if people, you know, know my gallery, they can pretty much know my name. <laughs> well, tell us how you started painting. Yeah, well, uh, when I moved to Taiwan, and you know, I started meeting a lot of different artists. And uh, when you meet one artist, you meet the whole, the whole group of artists, friends. And then, you know, I met collectors who love to collect art and also appreciate art. And, you know, art has been, there are over 300 galleries in Taiwan. You know, that's a lot for yes. a small island. Yes. Yes. So, you know, there's actually, you know, art, the history of art in Taiwan is, you know, is very uh, quite well established. And um, so there's lots of, you know, there's uh, established masters who are in their 80s, you know, still making art. There are a lot of students who are getting to art field. You know, there, there are a lot of young artists who are also looking for a platform, you know, to exhibit their artwork. And, um, and when, so when I discovered the power of art and, and, you know, I thought, I wonder if I can make my own art. <laughs> so I started just painting. Did you have a teacher or you just started doing it on your own? No, I just started wow. painting. First, I started like um, Jackson Pollock, you know, he does a drip painting. So I was inspired by that. I was like, you know, what would happen if I just took brush and dipped some paint and just splatter on a canvas. And I was like, wow, you know, this looks pretty good. I, I think I can do art. And, you know, from then on, I was just hooked, you know, and I tried different mediums of art. I, you know, first I did acrylic and then I, I did some oil and then, you know, charcoal sketches. And then more recently, you know, I've been doing ink pieces on paper. I saw you have a big collection. You have one where you, your whole gallery is filled with, you know, um, ink pieces on pa yeah, on the floor, right. on paper on the floor. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. The thing about making those pieces, you know, I can buy a 
big ream of paper and just roll it all <laughs> over my gallery floor, you know, many different sheets of it. And it becomes like my stage, you know, all that paper. And I take this big, uh, they call it mashin. I think in English it's like a hemp rope is how it's been translated. It's, it looks like a mop, okay? <laughs> it looks like I'm painting with a mop, but it's made from rope. And I dip in the ink and then, you know, you just, I, in, I wear my socks, I'm walking on the paper, you know, it's like a stage. And I think because of my music background too, you know, the painting and the music and the healing, it kind of brings all my different passions and, you know, experiences together. So, yeah, so you have to come to the gallery and we can paint together. Oh, I would love to. I mean, it seems to be something that's so freeing. Yes. If you can just like splatter all this paint on, yes. the, on the floor or on a canvas and then it'd be an expression of how you're feeling or yes. your aesthetic, you know, what you want to tell the world at that time. It seems like something really fun to do. Yeah. And, and, if, so, and if you like what you see as well, it's even better, right? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then when you finish your artwork, you have it and you can put it in your home, you can share with friends, you know, you can maybe exhibit it even. And so, yeah, so it becomes something that's, that's there and everlasting that you can share. And, you know, I, I think that's what art is about, you know, just sharing with people about the power of art and its, you know, its ability to really move people. Yeah. And I know that people, I mean, in the medical profession or in the uh, psychiatric profession use art as uh, therapy as well. Right. right. As a healing um, emotionally, psychologically. Do you know why that works? Yes, well, um, I met a Swedish artist who um, exhibited at my gallery, Gala Hegelberg Legion. So um, she worked as an art therapist in Paris for many years, and she was telling me about her project uh, working with Alzheimer's patients. And, um, you know, she was telling me, especially this case that's very vivid in my memory, you know, this woman um, who had Alzheimer's, she used to be an artist. So she was a professional artist. And when they went to visit her, she was like huddled in the corner of her bed, you know, not interacting. And then they slowly, you know, uh, prepared some paper, some paint for her, and, you know, got her to start painting again. And she just became a totally different person, you know, when she started to go back to her painting. Oh. You know, it's, I think it's just something that, you know, reaches across time and, you know, is, is something that's very powerful. You know, when you create art and also if you just observe art, you know, it can bring you out of a shell. I mean, there are a lot of like, um, even George W. Bush. Right. He's, He's a mating, mating artist. He's yes. a mating artist. Yes. He's and Anthony good. Hopkins and Jim Carrey, they all, you they know, paint. As paint. As well. <laughs> so, yeah, there's something about It's probably in art. a lot of us, if we we're willing to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and you know, that's the thing. It's like some people think, oh, but what if it doesn't look good, <laughs> you know? Then throw it away and try right. again. <laughs> exactly, I mean, you know, paper, canvas is not that expensive. And you know, so yeah, you just try it and it, you know, it can just be for yourself, it, you, you know, and then if you like it, you can share. If not, you know, it can just be for yourself. And, and that's the thing about art, it's like when you're creating the art, you know, it's almost like meditation, you know, because you're just focusing on the creation and you don't think about like, oh, what do I have to get at the grocery store or what do I have to do? Ah. To do this? You know, it's like an escape from the routine. That might be part of it too, because you're yeah. totally engrossed in something that's not so, what do you call it, um, results oriented. I mean, it's not so much stress. Right. It's, not, it's not like work. It's, right. like, it's like play. And yeah. it's also an expression of who you are. So, um, well, you know, we'll be talking more about art as therapy. Also, we'll be hearing uh, Julie sing um, <laughs> and seeing some of her music videos in our next episode of Taiwan Today. Um, it's been great talking with you, uh, Julie. She's a doctor, a singer, the founder of Winewood Gallery, also a COO at World TV. Thanks for tuning in to Taiwan Today. I'm Natalie So.